All right, welcome back to part three of Nintendo's second quest. I've changed the music up to be Earthbound because the last part was all Mother One. And uh, Earthbound's got some great music too. So after healing, I immediately encounter Rabiadet. That's no biggie. Should take it out in like two turns. And Anna has learned a new PSI, and we took two steps before getting into, uh, I think this guy's called a widow. He's lined up to call for help, and these guys, well actually what they do is sow their seeds. And it looks like I'm going for, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what Anna's spells are. Um, I think that is, honestly I don't know, but I think, well let's see, I think I used the top option. And it looks like that is Thunder, PK Thunder Alpha. That was pretty good, it did 35 damage, took it out. Pretty decent stuff from Anna. I think that was the first PSI that she used that was actually relevant. It could have been Beam, actually. Is Thunder even in this game? I don't even know. I don't know enough about the PSI because there's so much PSI. But it's one of the reasons I love this game so much. The, all the spells that Anna can learn is just amazing. She can learn like four versions of like all of the elemental spells, plus all of the other like healing and super healing. She learns PSI shield at level four, which is insanely good. I don't know if, how much PSI shield I use this run, but uh, it's, a, it's a good spell. It's essential for the final boss. And yeah, we are just gonna cruise on through the Magicant Caves for the third time to uh, get back to Thanksgiving to finally recruit Lloyd. But yeah, we'll see if we can get Anna to up to like level eight or nine. Another family. There seem to be a lot of eyeball families down here. I don't know what the uh, like what the different percent rates for the different uh, encounters are in general, but I feel like you always end up seeing one family fight when you're walking through these caves. It's like so unavoidable, unless you're like menu walking or teleporting through the caves. Or you have a repel ring, but repel rings aren't in this game. I, I think I might have said that in the first part. I don't remember, but I'll say it again, the repel rings were added in the English version, um, and uh, they're essentially repels from Pokemon, but in this game, they took them out, or they didn't take them out, they didn't exist, it was just, there's a different item called the friendship ring, which did basically nothing. I think it had a good line of text, but I don't think it did anything gameplay-wise. Unlike the repel ring, which only functions gameplay-wise. Alright, I'm about to go down the wrong wrong path. <laughs> I got I outsmarted myself. But not a biggie. I'm gonna have to big bag Anna. She's already got 45 max HP, which is honestly better than I would have thought for a level 7 Anna. I feel like Anna usually has like max mid 30s for a long time. But once she catches up in levels to Nintendo, she'll still have low HP but she'll at least be stronger. And at this point she can already tank like two or three hits from like magic Anna enemies. Especially with all the defense she has. But no magic defense. However Anna's like wisdom stat is much higher than anyone else's so I think wisdom plays a part in magic defense as well as magic attack alright what do we got now a whoosh swoosh smashed. 
obliterated. That's usually how most of the Magicant cave fights go. You just one-shot them. Ana guards for no reason. Yeah, see, I didn't even have Ana guard. And then, of course, Nintendo missed on the one that I didn't have Ana guard. But the whoosh didn't do anything to us. Anna's putting in that work with the one damage, physical attacks. I don't have her equipped with anything. I mean, honestly, I could get her a boomerang when I get to Thanksgiving. That would be the smart play, but I don't believe I did that. Uh, maybe I did. Maybe I'll surprise myself, but I don't think I did. <laughs> Considering how much money I have, I really should have. It was a pretty good fight. I healed myself for 11 and then he greeted me politely and walked away. Everything went just about as expected, perfectly. And now we will make our way, finally, outside of the caves to Thanksgiving. Alright, as we kill those two UFOs, we take two steps and then fight two more UFOs in true Mother 1 fashion. But I am not complaining. All of these fights means more and more experience for Anna. And the more experience she has, the safer she is and the less likely she is to die. Especially in these earlier areas. In the, uh, the area before Duncan's factory, like the area outside of Duncan's factory is where you can encounter all the trucks and cars and that's that's definitely dangerous. I'm not sure if I menu walk or not. I'm assuming I would because I have a level 1 Lloyd at that point. And I don't want him to die. <laughs> like but um I think I think Anna is already pretty much good on her own. She can hold her own basically. Although she's still definitely doing one damage from physical attacks. So yeah, no pendant, no... Uh... No offensive item for Anna, but when I just flashed my inventory there, the very last item was still the bottle rocket. Like I got, or the one I got at the very end of the last part. So now we will be getting Lloyd. The weakling stinkling himself. So the rules with Lloyd are the same for Teddy, but the rule is I will use him like he's a normal party member until he dies. And then once he dies, I'll only use him for, uh, what's it called? For like advancing the plot and for story triggers and stuff like that. And like, he, he'll probably end up getting, uh, like, I'm gonna spoil it right now, I don't think Lloyd makes it much past, like, literally this episode, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure he dies, but, um, uh, I, I think he gets revived a lot of instances, there are a lot of points in this game that just revive party members, so, once he dies once, and once Teddy dies once, I won't be using them for combat anymore, I'll only be using Anna and Ninten, so that's, like, the real reason... The other real reason, I'm going to have Anna not die the whole playthrough, and then she's also going to be, like, my main damage dealer, essentially. Because Nintendo with his bare hands, not the strongest. But Lloyd, since he was hiding in a garbage can, clearly he'll be a huge help to us. But he'll, he'll show us how to explode bottle rockets inside of a classroom, which is pretty cool. Nintendo and Anna did not know how to do that. And this line right here is where he says, oh, the kids at the school have probably been calling me a weakling stinkling, right? And then Nintendo just is silent. This part's really funny, actually, to see with Anna in your party. 
I, normally like you always i'm always in general you're always just uh nintend walking with lloyd and lloyd moon walks on you a little bit but it's funny and anna's just chilling too so now we got the gang um and we're leaving the school there's literally nothing else to do there i think we might come back there at some point or another they've got some the teacher there sells some pretty interesting items in this version of the game but it looks like i'm taking the hotel i guess anna didn't have psi or something So now we have the level 19 Nintendo, level 9 Anna, and a level 1 Lloyd. And I'm going to be doing Duncan's Factory without, um, without using bread, which is definitely interesting. So normally in any, like, in any playthrough, it's always good to bread... Uh, it's always good to bread before Duncan's factory because it's a super super big and long factory and um, It can be quite annoying. I did a little save there just in case but um, Yeah, Duncan's is very long and you don't want to get caught lacking walking out of Duncan's after you've uh, Oh, I'm going into menu walking immediately So once you get to the very end of Duncan's factory, you need to have Lloyd alive to fire the rocket to blow up this rock that I'm about to be walking past. So in theory, what you want to do is have Lloyd drop a bread um, in front of this rocket because that's where you're going after Duncan's. It's what going through Duncan's clears for you. And Lloyd at level one will usually die. So to mitigate the, uh, the, the time it spends like healing Lloyd or leveling up Lloyd, a strategy you can do is drop bread like right in front of where the rocket is and then die and then heal Lloyd like death warp to Magican or wherever your save is and then heal up everyone and then go and use your bread and then you can just fire your rocket with without having to like actually have Lloyd alive but uh, I'm not using bread at all so I'm just gonna be menu walking to keep Lloyd alive Hopefully Nintendo and Anna can help with the encounters. But um, Duncan's Factory is, it's kind of a beginner's trap. It's its definitely scary. Like my first playthrough, I was really scared of Duncan's Factory. And I was not, I got lost there for a long time. I had a map, still lost for hours, trying to get like all the epic items. Like there's a Franklin badge there and there's some other cool stuff in Duncan's. But uh, once you've gone through it enough times, there's like really one path that's the fastest path, and um, it's kind of it's kind of not that long of a factory once you know what you're doing. All right, I think um, I don't know how much longer this recording has. I think I might stop before Duncan's. But uh, I will keep part three going. I'll do a little bit of editing. But the uh, next recording will have audio, I believe. So that's a plus. You can hear me menu walk all the way through Duncan's with the fresh menu audio. <laughs> but yeah, so far no enemies. Like I was saying, I would probably be fine in this area with without menu walking but i just don't want to lose lloyd even if he died now i would have to revive him and then walk all the way through just to fire the rocket but uh i don't know why i'm menu walking here yeah because the encounter zone ends at those the little trees down there so now we got to talk to the dog and give him his pass well, you actually don't even have to talk to him. All you have to do is give him the pass. Dances through Nintendo. And it's a level one dog from the start of the game, obviously. So, uh, we can just 
press A, check like four times and win this guy, beat this guy six times. Interesting, looks like I guarded twice and then had Lloyd use the bottle rocket. Very, very interesting maneuvers. I literally have no idea why I did that, but I guess that was to get Lloyd some bottle rocket action. I always drop that bottle rocket. So, uh, alright, we're back with audio now. I'll do a little bit of editing, but, uh, yeah, now we can listen to this phenomenal menu sound again. Looks like the audio is a little quiet, too, so I'm going to crank it. Hopefully that's good. Wow, this audio is actually really quiet. Okay, I think that should be good. Yeah, so I think I said in part two, um, I recorded this on a Mac, and Mac does not do well with recording desktop audio. Plus, most of the times I recorded this, I wasn't even home. I was like hanging out with my friends and just wanted to play Mother 1 really bad. So I was like, I'll just do this epic playthrough. So, um, yeah, that's why the audio is really unbalanced. This part has audio at least, but it's super quiet. But that's okay. Duncan's Factory song isn't the best. But yeah, this path I'm taking is basically the fastest path through Duncan's. Except for when you talk to the air, that doesn't help. But we're going. I couldn't even list all the items that are in this factory that I'm missing. One of the things I wanted to do for this playthrough was go back to Duncan's and, uh, like, get every item. Do, like, a Duncan's factory scavenger hunt. But I think at where it is right now, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I did that yet. Maybe I still can if I still have this playthrough. I think I do. Yeah, I do. Maybe I will do a Duncan's Factory scavenger hunt. It, it could be a fun idea because I don't get any of the items and there's so many items. I could empty my inventories and then um, try to get every item. That would be fun. It would, it would, I would get so lost. It would just be me walking around Duncan's factory for 30 minutes. But we're going, we are probably over halfway through. Lloyd is still level 1. Anna is still level 9. So, I wonder what my next move will be. I think... I think the next logical thing to do would be to, well, I'm going to have to onyx hook out of Duncan's factory because there's no way I'm walking through. I mean, maybe I do, but I don't think I will. I think I'm going to onyx hook. Oh, there's an encounter. We got a Dr. Distorto and a Scrapper. Yeah, I was looking for Dimension Warp. I do not want Lloyd to die here. Yeah, what, it do, what I do with Anna and Lloyd doesn't matter too much. When you're dimension warping, that is. And Anna learned three spells off of that battle. Very nice. The battle of them just sitting there and doing nothing and Nintendo Psychic running away. Yeah, Anna learned three spells off that battle. <laughs> I don't want to jinx myself, but I think it's the only one in Duncan's, too. But yeah, even with Lloyd guarding, like, 
Well, with Lloyd guarding, Lloyd could probably take one hit. But most all of these enemies will be like two shotting Lloyd, one shotting Lloyd if he's like attacking. Because level one Lloyd is not the strongest. So yeah, I think I was talking about, I was going into this earlier, but um, I think the next play is to go through the desert and get teleport. Because I've already been to... I don't think I got the reindeer check, the reindeer teleport, because I only walked like through reindeer station. I didn't go down to the actual town. And I don't know if I got the spookane one too, but I'm assuming I did, because where you, like when you teleport to spookane, you, you like, you would, you enter in right where I was on the path. So I'm assuming I do have the spookane teleport. I definitely have snowman though. So, um, yeah, once I get teleport, I'll be able to onyx hook from wherever I am in full heal, and then I'll be able to teleport to most of the game. And you have to be in Youngtown to get teleport, so I'll have the Youngtown check as well. But we're almost done with Duncan's, just a little bit more left and down. And we are golden. Yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of areas in this game look the same, but Duncan's is the, like, pinnacle of everything looking exactly the same. A lot of the overworld areas uh, all look similar, but um, the different pathings in Duncan, it's so easy to get confused and lost, and when you have Lloyd dying and you have all this stuff happening, it's quite annoying, but... Uh, Thankfully, doing what I'm doing makes it a cakewalk, really. Like, the one fight I got into, I was obviously able to automatically escape. And I would be able to do that, like, four more times if I had to. So the game gives you tools, but it also gives you uh, not a lot of information, <laughs> I guess. Well, Lloyd's head is really flickering there. That's interesting. Maybe the game didn't expect you to have three sprites um, in this area already. Looks like I'm going for the onyx hook. Do it. I, there's no way I would have the patience to walk through that backwards. So I think one of the ideas here was to level up Lloyd too. But I don't, <laughs> I, spo again spoilers, I don't think I lasted much long, Lloyd lasted much longer. Um. I mean, it's not like me saying spoilers matters. It's a spoiler for this episode. Because I'm fairly certain he dies on, like... I don't think he even got level 2. He might have got level 2, but... I'm fairly certain he died on, like, one of the first encounters in Magicant. <laughs> Let's see. Actually, no. I feel like he died on the overworld. So now, I don't even know. I don't know. I'll, clearly, I don't know. But Anna is cooling. Anna has more PSI than she does HP. A trend that will not change for the rest of the game, I'm sure. Yeah, this uh, this Groucho is being mean to Lloyd. He's only hitting Lloyd. Oh, you hitting in 10 there. Still not greeting us politely. There we go. I think that was like the fourth turn, and he gave Anna experience there, which was really good. She didn't level up, but she got 100% of the experience from that fight, because uh, when he when he greets people politely, he only gives it to one party member. I think I said that in the last episode. Maybe I said that at the start of this one. But we're gaming. I almost went the wrong way. I did that last time. Now we got the whoosh whoosh. Mm -hmm. 
I just did a ton of menuing there, and really all I did was fight, and then guard and guard. I don't know what I did with Lloyd, but now he's about to die. So I attacked with Nintendo, and then I guarded with both. But Lloyd's chilling at 3 HP. And he got level 2. Let's go, Lloyd. Really putting in that work. He already surpassed my expectations. I thought he would die at level 1. But I didn't heal him, so this is why he died, I'm sure. <laughs> no heals for Lloyd. <laughs> and... He lived. Nintendo got a smash first turn. Am I gonna heal him? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Shows how much respect and care I have for Lloyd in Iron Death permadeath mode. Simply don't care. And there he goes. So Lloyd, for now on, will not be... I don't think he... He might get more levels from being alive, but I won't use him to attack. I really won't use him at all. Ideally, I want him dead so that Anna and Nenten get more experience. But, uh... I don't think it works out that way. But for as long as I can, I think I'm gonna keep him dead. Honestly, that's probably why I didn't heal him, was because I wanted Anna to get more experience, and I simply don't care for Lloyd. Lloyd has almost no offensive potential. He can throw... His best offense is using items. Like, throwing a super bomb, or... I can't even think of another. I guess he had, like... He has, um... Like, reusable items that are essentially spells that Anna can learn, like the flamethrower and the plasma beam. But, um... I don't really think those are, like, scaled towards level, so his level really doesn't matter at all. Uh, like, an example of that would be in, in the speedrun, in the Mother 1 speedrun where you kill the dragon, um, usually the what you do is you have a rope with Nenten and you have a super bomb with Lloyd, and you use the rope on the first turn, on the dragon and then have Lloyd throw the super bomb and the rope is just to make sure the dragon doesn't kill Lloyd because Lloyd's level one and then level one Lloyd throws a super bomb and one shots the dragon which has like the most HP in the game other than infinite health Gygus. so yeah Lloyd he does have offensive potential with items but again like his actual level doesn't matter so I guess that's why I didn't care much for uh, keeping him alive or leveling him up at all. And now I'm looking through uh, Anna's spells and then just guarded because the bear was about to die anyways. All right, so now we're going. Going back to Thanksgiving. So since... Another thing I was thinking... Was that since I used Lloyd to blow up the rocket, like... I don't really need him much for much anymore. I don't need him to be alive. Like, all of the stuff during Duncan's I needed him to be alive, but... At this point, there's absolutely no reason for him to be alive anymore. Um, one of the only... The only ways Lloyd is helping us, and he can do this while he's dead too, which is really good, is that we can use his corpse for, uh, like, as a wagon for items. Like, he has, we can still take advantage of his eight inventory slots, even though, um, even though he's dead. And that's really helpful in this game. I know some challenge runs don't like to do that, but, um, looks like I'm getting called by f called by my dad telling me to stop playing the game because I've get, been gaming too long but I'm gonna tell him I don't care I want to keep gaming because I'm gaming and then I get into a fight immediately that's what I get but um yeah Lloyd we can use Lloyd's um ghost as a corpse oh, oh yeah what I was gonna say was I, I've seen challenge runs where like in in older RPGs like specifically the Dragon Quest games I've seen people not using party members in Dragon Quest and then not using that party members inventory slots for inventory space but this game like right now with only Nintendo and Anna I only have max of 16 
and the max you can hold in general is 24 with everyone's like adding up everyone's inventory space and 24 slots is not big at all especially because items don't even stack in this game like nothing is stackable you only have 24 slots so I think I can use his corpse as a uh, as a as a wagon but we're going I still have zero melodies Anna I think I don't know, Anna's got some good spells at this point. She does not have PK Beam Gamma, which is what I'm probably looking for. PK Beam Gamma is um, the spell that one-shots everything, except for things that are specifically resistant to it, like um, Barbots are one, and uh, a couple other things like bosses are, I think, immune to it. But it looks like I'm menu walking here. I I think I'm just doing that to avoid asthma. I don't know. But I, since I'm menu walking here, I'm assuming I'll be menu walking through the zoo. Or <laughs> the zoo. <laughs> through the desert, I mean. The zoo is normally the first place you menu walk. This is Santa Claus Station. Now that we have access to this, we can actually use the train stations um, in the towns to the south. But we're not even going to go in there. We're going to go straight to the desert. But uh, it looks like we're coming up on time soon, so I think I'll leave the desert for the next episode. So, uh, yeah, it looks like... Thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you soon for part four.